the players kill the escorts. Players put their clothes on the bodies and torch them so the rest of the escorts would find them and the party were all killed. They leave the quote unquote princesses and found a new adventuring group. Their name is one letter of the original one. <laughs> Hey, what's ready? Food Gore Spew here, and I got my food back from Earthfly Blast, uh, but I might have overdone it. Anyway, how are you guys doing? Welcome to another DD Memes video. Hope you have a wonderful day today. Before jumping into it, I want to quickly kindly ask if you want to take a moment to smash the like button, takes a second, helps out, and I appreciate it so much, so thank you if you do that. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. How best to play evil? Alignments? How does one go about playing a chaotic evil character without ruining the campaign for the other players and the DM? I trend towards lawful good but have been wanting to give Chaotic Evil a shot, but I don't wanna mess with other players' fun. It's a very thin line to walk when you're playing Chaotic Evil when everyone else is a lawful or good alignment. My advice would be to play it like a <coughs> squad member. Luckily, I had a character just like that. Had a Chaotic Evil Warlock. Got caught by the town guard sacrificing citizens to my patron, Asmodeus. Was arrested and sentenced to death. Before my sentence could be carried out, the kingdom got attacked by demons. Luckily, my warlock was a very prominent demonologist. King offered me a deal, help put a stop to the demon's scourge, and I would be banished instead of killed. My warlock took the offer. The king did have insurance on me by putting me in the custody of a group of adventurers. They were tasked with killing me if I was to step out of line. Had a fun time with that group for about a year and a half. That, honestly, that actually sounds nice. That sounds like a nice way to... Uh... <laughs> actually be playing a chaotic evil character without, you know, messing with the party too much. Alternative start. So, you're all in a tavern. Is there anything that's actually wrong with the classic tavern start? Or is avoiding it one of those things appetite f <gasps> try to push because everything needs to be a creative masterpiece? Cause it sounds to me like a pretend to get mad for upvotes meme like Comic Sans. It's a bit cliche. There are more unique ways to start your campaign. You meet up on the road to a major city. You escape a jail together. You are the survivors of a massive attack or battle. You were kidnapped by bandits. You grew up in the same town or village. You were teleported to a weird demiplane. You were hired by the same guy. You met in a brothel. Great minds think alike. Tiny spoiler for early Horde of the Dragon Queen. Be me, first time DM and zero times player. Be not me, half elf rogue, tiefling hexblade warlock, young gold dragon forcefully polymorphed into draconic bloodline sorcerer gnome and life domain telepathic housecat cleric. Be playing Horde of the Dragon Queen. Sorcerer is absent, so his character refuses to go do anything. Cause there are no gems involved and he's currently not in danger, so he will stay where it's safe at. Players go to the mill to bring food supplies back to the fortress while the city is under siege by the cult of the dragon. They fight through the cultists and cobbles that spot them while making their way to the mill. Rogue climbs the hill to try to get info on the surroundings and sees a group of cultists making their way towards the mill. She sees a group of cultists slowly getting closer to the mill and they decide to risk it and make haste towards the meal despite higher risk of a random encounter. One fight later, they make it, but just barely before the cultists arrive. They have a short amount of time to do anything before the cultists arrive. Housecat Cleric decides that the best plan would be to carry out as many bags of grain as they can before the cultists arrive. Have the rogue lure them into the meal and then use alchemical fire that they just found to burn the whole group of cultists together inside the meal. Ding 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 that mp3 and uh, photo, of a <laughs> photo of the cleric. Cultists are here. They don't see anyone until the first one walks right up to the door frame where the rogue is waiting. She shoves the cultist and then moves deeper on top of the meal to hide as a bonus action. Cultists are now aware of your presence. They block off the exit and set the meal on fire. Turns out the goal of the cultists was to destroy the meal, grain and starve the fortress. And now the rogue is trapped in the burning building. Have her roll some athletics and acrobatics to escape through the window that they were aware of. She escapes the burning meal, taking only free damage. She tells the rest of the party that they need to escape as soon as possible. They are reporting to the town master of the city. Realize that the cleric and warlock have no idea what exactly happened because the rogue never actually told them about it and they think that their plan has succeeded, <laughs> so they take full responsibility for burning the meal. <laughs> Two months of scheduling to burn down the grave. <laughs> Oh god, absolutely horrible communication in the group, <laughs> Jesus man. Leech problems. Be me, Leech. Chilling in my badass <gasps> leech castle. Did some bad things to achieve it, but my goals are good. Wanted to have time to learn everything to make the world better. Studying some ancient books of medicine on my bone throne. Hear a noise down below. Magic missile that spell. 
more adventurers quote unquote, trying to destroy me and take my hard earned savings. Hear the most cringe inducing scream that my non existent ears could experience. Look into my scrying orb, some <coughs> ugly gnome being digested by my gelatinous waste disposal system. 10 out of 10, excellent value, worth the purchase. Another adventurer, a healer, just fails a saving throw. I knew those spikes would be a good investment. You're banging on the door. Enchanted axe that scroll. Door gets shattered and the big fucking barbarian rushes in. Fuck my non life. He rolls a natural 20 and happens to hit my phylactery. And death was nice while it lasted. The brute plunders every chest of my book funds. It's on my lawn before leaving with my stuff. Adventurers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely horrible experience. Um, wouldn't recommend it again. 0 out of 10. Anon's players aren't the brightest. I think this counts as relevant. The Mad Mage had captured all the 12 princesses in the rail. To try to fool the party, he made a fake dungeon wherein a bunch of random women had their memory changed so they would think they were the princesses. The party defeated his simulacrum and rescued the quote unquote princesses. I described one as an elf and she was supposed to be from a human kingdom. They didn't notice. They wrote for all the royal families expressing that the princesses were all safe and sound. One of the players, who I suspect has a fish, tries to woo the elven quote unquote princess. Keeps talking about how amazing it is to get to know a real elven princess. She, confused, states that she's human. Realization sets in. The party are sure that they're going to lose their job if not their heads. They come up with a plan. They keep killing a bunch of quote unquote princesses in their sleep and reincarnating them as different races until they resuscitate as the right races for every princess. Modify their memory so they don't know they had been killed. They plan to deliver them to the trusted escorts that are coming their way as they think they wouldn't know how the princesses look like and they could run with the money. The first escorts arrive. They know how the actual princess of their kingdom are supposed to look like. The players kill the escorts. Players put their clothes on the bodies and torch them so the rest of the escorts would find them and the party were all killed. They leave the quote unquote princesses and found a new adventuring group. Their name is one letter of the original one. Uh, no, I think that's brilliant. <laughs> it's an above average uh, level of intelligence in the party thing. Hiding my gold. So it's my first time playing D&D with a group of us who are about half and half when it comes to having D&D experience. As it's my first time, I'm willing to let others take the lead, so I make a character who's a drunken homeless wizard and essentially just so numb to life that he goes along with whatever his group decides. We're keeping it casual, so one guy makes a character who's incredibly dumb. The third is also a new player who's hesitant to be assertive in the campaign. The last is an experienced player who's really into the role-playing and supposed to be morally grey and the justify the means big picture guy. I think that his thinking was that our characters would counterbalance his thinking, but as everyone else was either too dumb or too passive, his morally grey ass became the main decision maker for the campaign. Anyway, our characters are recruited by a noble mercenary organization that essentially acts like a hub for us to come back to and restock between quests aka adventure zone. After a few missions, we get sent to an island where horrible abominations are breaking out of an underground vault because the magical little girl who's able to control them has been kidnapped. However, the islanders, despite being in danger of being overrun by these creatures, don't want to evacuate the island because their entire economy is based on farming these things. We think that's a dumb economic setup and uh, try to convince them to leave the island, but they won't budge. Anyway, we start asking around the island for information on the kidnapping, but get absolutely nothing. And I mean nothing. It turns out the DM wanted us to return to our organization's headquarters and ask about the kidnapping there, but gave us no hint that that was what we were supposed to do. So. We decide to try to evacuate the islanders in the meantime. Well, Mr. Morally Grey decides the best way to do that is to break into the city's main vault and rob them so that they'll have no choice but to leave now that they can't support themselves. We, like usual, follow his lead having no clue what else we're supposed to do and start trying to break into the place without killing anyone. Cut past the city councilman and his wife assassinated in their sleep to get a key and several guards murdered and we're making our escape on a stolen boat with a haul of 7000 gold each. Mr. Morally Grey is having a complete mental breakdown because of how we just went full on evil and that's when we notice that the ship with the island's entire police force chasing after us. Now, I'm a wizard with fireball who's going to prison either way 
and they're on a wooden ship in shark infested waters, so it's not hard to deduce what happens next. I think that that one spell got me the highest skill count in the game, but who's counting? By the time we pull into the mainland, a standing army is waiting there to bring us in. We know we're screwed. Well, I realize that if we get arrested, they're going to take all of our gold. Now my mentality is that we just went through hell and back and committed numerous atrocities for that gold, so I wasn't going to give it up so easily. So I hid it in the one place I knew they would never find it. Up my ass. My DM told me to roll sly of hand. Natural 20. When we eventually broke out of prison due to the monsters making it to the mainland and going on an unstoppable conquest, which we spent the remainder of the campaign trying to stop, I bankrolled the entire party with my 7000 gold. Eventually, Mr. Morally Grey, who after that event turned into a full-on psycho, got executed after trying to assassinate the king. And my character went through an arc where he learned to start giving a <coughs> and try to actually do good in the world, instead of just going along with what his friends were doing. Yeah, I've apologized to the DM multiple times since then, but he was pretty cool about it and letting us do whatever we wanted. He actually did a really good job of tailoring the rest of the campaign to account for our terrible decisions, which we made plenty more of. We've learned since then, and the group has done a much better job of keeping the campaigns on track and not becoming murder hobos. Well, <laughs> at least there's a happy ending in this one. That's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how the gold, you know, had enough space up in there, but uh, maybe that's a question we don't want to ask. How I learned my lesson and became Dragon Bait. Bimi, 6th level Dragonborn Aussie Artificer aka Bush Mechanic in 5th edition. Be not me. Ranger, Fighter, Paladin and Bard. Have rejoined the campaign that I died in previously. I had stepped into a guarded room and 4 shadows had instantly strength drained me to death. Mistakes were made. Party, be hearing of a Shadowfell intrusion into our plane from the local Minotaur city-state. Do not go to the shadowy place that PNG. Party goes to that shadowy place. The darkness seems to get stronger towards the cave entrance. Peek inside and see four silhouettes splashed on the wall behind four very charred skeletons. Well, that's clearly Dragonfire. It's a dragon in that cave. Bugger. We can either fight it in its lair, running the risk of lair actions, or fight it in the open, running the risk of it flying around smoking us. Party climbs on top of the cave and readies action to ambush it with lockdowns just before it can leave. Q, send in the <coughs> Walk in the cave entrance. Me in Draconic. Oh, Mr. Dragon! The four silhouettes immediately try and stab me. DM. If I had a nickel for every time this happened, I'd have two nickels. But it's weird that it happened twice. High AC plus shield means that every shadow's attack misses. And yeah, I learned my lesson. Party quickly dispatches them by jumping on their heads then climbs back up to the ambush position. Take two. I shout down the tunnel, in Draconic again. Oi mate, you got a second? Party hears a rumbling as a black dragon with shadow dripping from its body climbs the stairs. Dragon. Oh, you dispatched my door guards. How irritating. Oh sorry mate, I thought they were squatters. That's my fault. Very sorry. I'm a traveling tinker. Have you got any weapons that need sharpening or things that need fixing? Oh, oh of course. Come right on through. Yeah, I'd rather you bring them out here, Dragon thinking and then smiles with teeth. Me to the DM. I take dodge action. Dragon uses breath weapon. I take a blast of shadows to the face for a nice chunk of health and immediately flip the dragon off and describe how my character starts listing every single swear he can think of. Dragon starts crawling out of the cave to finish me off. Bard throws a glowing boomerang at it. The ranger shoots it and the fighter and paladin drop on its head and with some lucky crits and smites kill it nearly instantly. Party. Now calls me Dragon Bay. Worth it. Alright, on that note, that's going to be it for today's video. So thanks for watching, watch, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you didn't for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. As always, you need to buy a lot, so thanks for watching those. Links for if you need to check out the subreddit, Discord, and anything else. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Have a